Hi everyone, it's Dave here, East Rosebud Fly and Tackle in Billings, Montana. Last week I did a tying video on tying soft hackle flies. I promised you that I would show you how to use longer than usual hackle to make it work for smaller flies. I forgot to do it and one of our uh, watchers called me on it and told me about that. So at one, I'm happy to know that you're paying attention out there. And secondly, uh, thanks for reminding me to do this. So today I'm going to do two things, three things actually. I'm going to show you two different ways to use longer hackle on a smaller fly. And then I'm also going to use starling hackle, show you how to tie this nice little starling and peacock uh, soft hackle fly. So let's start off with one method of using longer than acceptable hackle. It's called the compensated hackle technique. We'll get our thread started. This is a size 14, 1x long nymph hook. And of course, since we want our fly to sink, we want a heavy fly. We're going to wrap our thread right back over the thread point. This is just 8 0 thread here. Let's take a guinea feather. The guinea feathers are available in a variety of dyed shades. Unfortunately, when you're tying 16 and smaller soft hackles, it's very, very difficult to find hackles that are small enough. Starling is certainly an option. There's not as many colors. It's not spotted, banded, whatever. So what we're going to do first, we're going to stroke this feather back, and we're going to cut out this tip section like that. Okay. We'll go ahead and get rid of the fluff down here. Okay, so what we're going to do, and on most soft hackles, you want your hackle to be about hook shank long. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this hackle here, peel it back a little bit, and we're going to measure it against our hook shank to get the size hackle we want. So we want about a hook shank long, which is right about there. Then we're going to bring our hack, our thread up, about two eye lengths behind the hook eye. We're going to make one soft wrap, another soft wrap right on top of the other one. Like I say, this is called the distributed hackle technique, and all we're going to do is distribute this hackle around the hook. We've cut out that center stem because that would influence the way our hackle moves. And you can feel free to pull this forward, pull it back, get whatever hackle length you want. And we'll keep trying to get this distributed. Then simply pull tight. And then we're going to wrap back one thread wrap over the next, a few wraps. Lift this up at about a 45 degree angle. Keep your scissors parallel to the hook shank and clip it. We want it as tapered of, of an abdomen as we can. Okay, and uh, I'm just going to use some simple hair's ear dubbing. Of course, you can use all types of things for the body, biots, dubbing, ribbing, all kinds of things. But in this interest of time, we want to keep this dubbing fairly thin so that we can taper it nicely. See where we're at here. Wind this forward. And remember, for us to be able to flare this hackle effectively, we do need a thorax. We need a kind of a bump here to flare it against. So now I have my thorax. We're right at the back of the hackle. This is a simple half hitch tool. You can use anything you want. Simply get in here and push this hackle back, like so. Hold it back here. Bring your thread to the front behind the hook eye, and then make wraps of thread, one right behind the other, to force that hackle back. OK, now all that's left is a simple whip finish. First of all, just make sure we got our hackle out of the way.
Quick finish forward towards the hook eye. Three wrap. There you go. So what we've done, we used a hackle that was much too long for our purposes, and by using the distributed uh, hackling technique, we were able to make that hackle work. And we can make that hackle work for any size of fly. So that's one possibility. That's the distributed hackle. The next thing we're going to do is called compensated hackle. It's uh, similar in technique, a little more difficult to tie, and that it's a little more difficult to get your measurements down, but it doesn't take much practice to get it right. We'll get the same hook size set here. Get our thread started. Move it down to about mid shank and take off the tag in. All right, for this example, let's use a Hungarian partridge. We'll pick a feather that we know is overly large. Okay. Go ahead and take the fluff off the back end of it, like so. Alright, very, very similar to the distributed hackle. We just tie it in a little bit differently. Hold your hackle back so it's about 90 degrees from the hook shank. And then we're going to hold it tip down against the hook and measure our hackle. Since we want hackle, that again is about one hook shank long. So that would be, and this, this is the tough part of this part, is, is estimating where to tie it in. So right here we're looking at about a hook shank long a hackle hanging over the front of the fly. So all we're going to do is we're going to tie this in like a regular soft hackle tie, but we're not going to tie it behind the hook eye. We're going to tie it back here. A couple of wraps here. Get our hackle pliers and we'll take two or three wraps. Remember, soft hackle, you do not want to over hackle. It should be sparse. Comb these fibers back as you're wrapping forward. So we're only going to take a couple of wraps. And we're going to bring our thread through that hackle, just like it was behind the hook eye, and then up where the quill part is. Tie that down well. Snip off the quill end. Reach in here and snip off the tip. Now what we're going to do is just bring this hackle forward just like we did with the distributed hackle. It's just a different tie-in on the hook. Try to envelop the hook shank with these fibers. And we're just going to take a couple of loose wraps and stop about a hook eye length behind the eye. So again, it appears very much like the previous fly. And then we're going to wind back so that our hackle is not going to go anywhere on us. I'm sorry for the duplicity here, but we're just going to go ahead and use the same hair's ear dubbing. Again, keep it thin so you can control it. But these are really handy technique, because like I said earlier, when you're tying 16, 18s, even 20 soft hackle, it's almost impossible to find a hackle that's small enough to do that with. You want a little thorax bump back here. Like before, we're simply going to get in here and push this hackle back. Looks like my measurements were pretty close. Bring your thread forward, behind the hook eye, wrap back to force these hackles against your thorax. And then all you have to do is whip finish. And there you go. Very simple, very fast. And if you look at the two different flies, they're very comparable in the way that they came out. Here's the distributed. Here's the compensated. Both of them look fine and both of them will fish very, very well. So there's a little couple of tricks to keep under your belt there. Now I'm going to show you how to tie a size 18 peacock and starling. We're going to use here as a 1x long hook. 
which uh, for most soft tackles is not a bad idea since you're only wrapping half to three quarters of the hook shank. It's nice to have that extra eye length worth the hook shank for your materials. Okay, so size 18, we're going to use finer thread here. Again, we're going to start it behind the eye. And wrap it to just over the hook band. All right, I think we've talked about before about peacock curl. This is an eyed stem, or you can buy it in bulk. Um, the back of the hurl actually, or back of the piece actually has no flues on it. So when we tie it in, we want to make sure we tie it in correctly. This size of a fly, a couple of hurls will work on a larger size fly. You may need as many as a half a dozen. We'll get these tips aligned. And if you look at your hackle, you'll find that the front surface is where all the hurl is. If you look at the back, there isn't any. So we're going to get these lined up. We're going to spoon them together. Clip about, oh, an inch or inch and a half off the tips. It's just simply too fine to hold. And when we tie this in, we're going to tie it in with the long flues facing towards the back of the hook. Tie it in here. Bring our thread forward, and we're going to wrap up to, again, about a hook eye length back behind it. Keep these hackles together. If they start getting away from you, the same thing if you're wrapping a pheasant tail or peacock curl, keep, keep them corralled by keeping them, your fingers close to the hook shank. That way you can keep them together. I'll get my fingers out of the way here. And you can see how that long, the long flues are covering, every wrap are covering up the naked stem from the previous wrap. Now you can also put really fine gold wire rib on this to help reinforce it. Take that off. And then we're going to wrap up behind the eye. All right, the starling skin. We have starling in a multitude of dyed colors. Just like the Hungarian partridge, the entire bird is useful. You can use just about every feather on this pelt. I'm just going to take a hackle here off the upper back, the one feather here. Now, as you might imagine, this is a delicate feather. You've got to be careful with it as you're working. Take the tip here and stroke it back just like on any other soft tackle until we have a good division point there. I'd like to turn it over where the concave side is facing up and clip off a few fibers on that side so that the first wrap lays nice and doesn't flare. Okay, we get back to our division point and right behind the eye We'll tie this in right at the division point. Make sure that the concave side is up because we want these hackles to wrap backwards. A few wraps of thread to hold it down. Clip off the tip. Then carefully with your hackle pliers, and I do mean carefully, I'm going to wrap this back starting right behind the eye, and again, stroke those fibers back, really keep them back. <laughs> okay, there's one turn, and there's a second turn, all right. Bring your hackle over to the far side, kind of wiggle your thread through, one wrap there, one wrap in the middle of the hackle, last wrap right behind the eye. Reach in here, trim off your excess hackle. Okay, number four. I should have shortened that hackle a little bit, I see that now, but I 
again, wind your thread back to force that hackle up against the thorax. And whip finish. Now this fly can be used in several situations. It's not only an, an excellent caddis imitation, particularly for our micro caddis, which are a dark black dun. It's also a good imitation in a slightly smaller size for midges and even for the trico hatch. So if you're having a hard time seeing your small dry fly on top, drop a soft hackle 12, 16 inches back behind it on smaller tippet. Use your dry fly as an indicator and fish them both together. All right, if you have any questions or comments, as always, please contact us. Thanks for joining in. Happy tying.